Okay, and with that, it is time to get ready for class. I know Ashley and Catherine are already in the house, so um, hope you're ready to learn about disk profiles and how you can become a perfect match for any business in real estate. Catherine, Ashley, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for teaching this class. Thank you, Kevin. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we know things are opening up. The beach is opened up today. So, and business is booming for a lot of people. So thank you so much for being here. And Catherine is here with me. Hello. Oh. Thank you for joining us. Kevin, it says, um, I need you to see oh. the attendee screen share. Yeah, let me, let me hook that up for you. Wait, cancel. Hold on. I'll do it. Give me a second. No problem. Okay. Okay. All right. Try it now. Okay. Got it. Um, okay, can everybody see? Yeah, we can see. Okay, perfect. So today we're going to be talking about disk profiles um, and mostly focusing on what your communication style is so that we can work smarter and not harder. But before we get into that, uh, we wanna give a couple of quick facts about ourselves. So my name is Ashley Silva. I am one of your Miami YPN 2020 leaders. I was born in New York, but I've been living in Florida for 10, not for 10 years, since I was 10 years old. And I graduated from UCF with a bachelor's in psychology actually. Um, which ties well into this, but I've, I'm a realtor with Coldwell Banker and Aventura out of the Aventura office. I've been plant-based since July, 2019. So it's almost gonna be a year. I'm very proud of that. And I am also a soon to be mommy. I am going to be having my first baby coming September. So I'm excited about that. <clears throat> Hey everyone. Uh, so my name is Catherine Arteta. I was originally born in Colombia, but I came here when I was a baby. So I was raised here my entire life. I am a Florida State Seminole. So sorry to all the one fans. Um, the sales director for Next Level Realty. We used to be Realty World. Uh, we just recently rebranded. Um, my happy place is by the water. So I'm one of those that's ex overjoyed that the beach finally opened up and um, I'm a avid runner really it's the only thing that takes my stress away is running outside especially now right <laughs> <laughs> okay so the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place so a lot of times as realtors there's a lot of miscommunication that goes on within our deals within our offices and we believe that communication has taken place but it really hasn't so like in this illustration it shows you my words came out fine. They were processed incorrectly by your brain. So sometimes we think that we're saying things and the other, we don't understand why the other person is not receiving it how we intended it. And a lot of that has to do with your personality styles, the way you communicated the information and how they receive it as well. So why is this important? Um, as we all know, people will work with who they know, like, and trust. And as realtors, we already wear many different hats. So it's important for us to continue to be chameleons and really adapt to these different communication styles to better understand how to communicate with our clients so that we can build rapport. And this is important so that we can absolutely get to a close. So I don't know, a quick example, um, I don't know if any of you, any of you watch Selling Sunset on Netflix. Catherine, do you watch that? Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so quick example. Um, it's on Netflix. It's a real estate show based out of California. And there is a buyer, a $5 million buyer, 
who is interviewing two agents from the same office, from the same team, um, to be their buyer's agent, $5 million. So she interviews them both together at the same time, and then both of them meet with her individually. But one of them is really catering to her and like meeting her at at where she's at in her personality style, communication style, and adapting to her. So the buyer liked to walk dogs. She was very low key. So this agent also like went out and bought her dog treats and, you know, like dated courted her. And then the other realtor was very like, she liked going out for drinks and fancy restaurants. So she took the client out for that, but the client was not interested in that. So at the end, who do you think she went with? She went with the person that met at her communication style level, that bought her the dog treats, that really showed interest in her. So this other agent lost out on a $5 million buyer because of not knowing how to establish that rapport. Don't let that be you. So quickly, um, I don't know if many of you have heard about the DISC profile assessment, but some history. It was created in 1928 by Dr. William Moulton Marston, he was a psychologist out of Harvard. Um, he developed a DISC assessment. He studied behaviors and how people interact in groups with their behaviors. Uh, so it was really more for group settings and how individuals behaved in those group settings and what made them click and what made them not click. Uh, he also invented the lie detector and he created the first dominant um, woman in the comic world, Wonder Woman. Uh, he wanted people to understand their own behavior patterns, and this model has evolved for 90 years. And throughout the years, it's been evolved by different psychologists. And the most recent one was, is now from 2007, where a psychologist created this for businesses, so that businesses can give these to their managers, their sales force, team members, and their leaders, entrepreneurs, um, so that they knew how to better work with their teams and have a successful work environment. So the DISC profile, it has four components. The main ones are dominance, influence, steadiness, and conscientiousness. And Catherine and I are going to dive in a little deeper into all of these uh, later on, really about your own personal style and then how you identify these within clients and how to talk to clients and what they like and don't like. So you have your dominance that, as you can see here, they're very direct, results-oriented, firm, strong-willed and forceful, and your influence, influential people are gonna be very outgoing, enthusiastic, optimistic, opinionated, and they want people to see that. Uh, steadiness, they're very even-tempered, accommodating, very tactful, they do not like change. And conscientiousness, they're analytical, reserved, they like facts, and they're quick and to the point. So Catherine and I want to share our own personal DISC assessments. So I took a paid one through the discprofile.com and we're going to be sharing that at the end. Um, so I'll explain this over here. The I, so let's go with this first circle here. So the shading represents all of my components. So I am an I, so I'm influence and if you're closer to the edge of the circle, that means you're a high I or you're a high D or a high S, high C. If you're closer to the middle, then you're moderately inclined, which means that you have those personality types, that communication style, um, but you also have the other ones that you can mix with. And then when you're closer to the center, you have a low inclination. So the, the dot determines where you're at in your personality or communication style. And then the eight words around are your priorities. So everybody can have three to five different priorities. And these represent what you like in a work environment. So in a work environment, I like action, I like enthusiasm, and I like collaboration. I think this is I actually told Catherine that I took this twice because the first time the, the I was a little higher and I didn't agree with it, but then I came out with still I, so um, I guess I am an I. And, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. But um, 
This one over here shows you the 12 different components. So you can be an I, an ID, more inclined to an IS, and so forth. So when you take the assessment through the discprofile.com, it'll provide this as well as 23 pages showing you how you interact with others, how if you're in a disagreement with those type of communication styles, how you can get to their level, how can you move past that. So I found that one very inform informative. Again, that is the paid assessment and we'll provide a resource for that later. <clears throat> All right, so I did a different one. Um, I did the Tony Robbins disc assessment. You can also Google it. That one, so this one I also did twice. I did one two years ago and then um, one recently, and they pretty much came out also the same, which is neat. I highly recommend everyone does one because it helps you better understand your own personal style, helps you also check yourself when you're speaking to people and adapt better to who you're speaking to because at the end of the day you can be relaying the same message or you think you're relaying the same message and you can be telling it to four different people and they will all give you a different response if you relay the message the same way it's really going to depend on your delivery the result that you're going to get so this one's a little different because it has it shows your natural and then your adaptive style your natural style is um, sort of self-explanatory. It's how you are when you're being truest, <clears throat> excuse me, truest to yourself. Um, it's also the style that you end up reverting back to when you're under stress. The gray area is your adaptive style. So the adaptive style is more when you know you're being observed or when you're in a social setting, you're, you're interacting with somebody because and we all do this. Um, if you say you don't, I mean, we all do this because we always want to get the result that we're intending to from the person you're talking to or from the scenario you're in. So you always try to either mirror the person or read them in order to then get that end result. So just to go over a little bit um, on this, you see that the D, I'm pretty much level. The I, I'm social, but when I'm in a gathering, I'm even more interactive and more engaging with people. The S, I'm extremely low. It drops even more <laughs> when I'm around people. That mean, but that actually means I hate routine. It bores me. Um, I need things on the fly. And then the C is very high. I'm very analytical. If you come to me with an idea, you better have facts to back it up. I'm skeptical. Um, and, but when you're in a group setting, again, on, in my case, it lowers down a little bit since you have to tend to make decisions a little bit more on the fly. Um, perfect example, when you're under stress of how your dominant personality comes out, when I'm stressed, let's say I'm gonna use um, a transaction, for example, and I'm not sure if it's going to appraise, we've all been there. <clears throat> Think back and see how you handle that situation. I know personally, my analytical side comes out. So not only do I pull comps and I give it to the appraiser, I pull comps and I'm insanely detailed. I do adjustments. Every time I receive um, an appraisal, I study it to try to get to know how they do appraisal so I can sort of format it the same way. So when I give it to them, they can truly understand where I'm coming from and how I got um, to that price. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be at the mercy of their opinion. You do take into consideration um, where you're coming from, especially if you can back it up with bots um, and data. Okay, next slide. So this one here, it's also part of the report. We're all a mix of D, I, C, um, and S. We're all a mix of everything. Depending on where you see yourself on that chart depends on how high you are. So for example, the D, it's really going to measure your preference for problem solving. If you're very demanding, driving, or if you're more on the agreeable where you tend to agree with everybody, that, that would be a low D. Your I is going to um, measure how you interact well with others, how emotional you can get also. Your S is going to be your preference for pacing, your steadiness, routine, very high S's like routines. And then your C depends on, measures your preference for procedures, protocols. If you're very high, those are your perfectionists. 
If you're very low, those are the ones you see that tend to be a little bit more careless, um, careless, rebellious. So going back to the chart before, and again, once you um, take one of these, notice where you are in those charts and it's going to give you a good example of where you are. So for example, with the D, I'm right, was right smack in the middle. So it's the term in competitive. Oh, go back to the next one. I, um, I was between six and seven. So it's enthusiastic, sociable, inspiring, S lower. So instead of being patient and predictable, I'm more active, restless, outgoing. And then C, I'm higher, so analytical, orderly, careful. All right, these are extremely important to um, take, as I said before, not only for you to better understand yourself, but also to understand, especially if you're building a team, if you're hiring an admin, if you're looking for buyer's agent, listing agents, it's good to have them take these tests prior to hiring them so you can look for certain qualities. If you're hiring, let's say an admin, you wanna make sure that they aren't an extremely high S, but they're somewhere in the middle. You wanna make sure that their C is high because you want them to be meticulous with your work. For buyer's agents, you want to make sure that the I is high. Even if you already have an existing team, it's good to have them all take that to see how the dynamics work and how each individual works, especially if you're looking for to train them. It's good to know their personality style because everyone learns in a very different way. Go back to when we were in school. Let's say you were in a classroom full of 40 students, everyone took in the same material. Not everyone absorbed it the same way because you all have your different learning styles. This will help you grow your team, um, grow your individual team members. Now, going back to clients, unfortunately, when we're working with clients, we can go and say, oh, wait, before I begin working with you, can you first take this personality test so I know how to deal with you? <laughs> they're going to laugh in your face or they're just going to really think you're being funny. Um, so this is when we have to be keen in observing, really reading the signals, reading their body language, hearing the tones of their voice um, to try and quickly determine more or less how they are. So observe if you meet them in person for the first time or you meet someone in person for the first time, observe their body language. If they're open to speaking with people, if they're hunched over in a corner, um, note how they stand or do they have their hands crossed, where they place their hands, their eye contact, if they look at you straight in the eye, if they talk to you and at the same time observing the room, if they talk to you in a low voice and looking down, all that will influence what you make of them. If you don't get to meet them in person the first time, really then pay attention to their tonality. You can tell a lot about a person with how they express themselves, the words that they use, and also the tone of their voice and how it changes, the pitches in the different conversations. You can tell what triggers them, um, what doesn't, and also, do they speak determined? Do they speak very excited and emotional? You can pick up all those and immediately start to assess them properly. So you can, if let's say you're working on a listing presentation, you can tweak your delivery on that listing presentation before you get there. So speaking on how to recognize traits, Ashley. So that's one of the main reasons why we did this because in real estate, not everything is perfect, but we want to try to find our perfect match. So how do we use this in real estate and what will it allow agents to do? As we have mentioned here and Catherine briefly spoke about, we want to understand our own natural selling style. Um, we want to know how to be able to communicate with our clients, to create open lines of communication because an I and a C are not going to want to be communicated to at the same way. We wanna be able to get to a close, right? So how do we do that? There's a lot of times when we're in deals and a lot of miscommunication happens and deals fall through. And a lot of it is because people don't understand each other or things were lost in translation along the way. By knowing somebody's 
personality communication style. Uh, we can motivate and influence them. We can know what to say, how to say it by using the body language, as Catherine mentioned, and the things that we have to do in order to get them to see our point or for them to move forward. Uh, we definitely absolutely want to establish rapport to continue that client base because even after the deal is closed, we want to get more business for them, right? And from them. So more leads, more referrals, and we get that by building a great relationship with them. Build trust, motivate until we can get the deal closed. All right, so how do you work with a high D? I know they're all our favorites, right? Probably not. <laughs> um, those are the ones that, I mean, you know you're working with a D, a high D from the moment you walk in or from the moment you first speak on the phone. They are determined, they have a strong voice, um, and they want results and they want to know how you're going to give it to them. They're efficient, they're bold, and they expect you to be the exact same way. Um, they want you to work as quick as possible. They need you to be available. But at the same time, they'll respect your schedule. So don't think that, especially if let's say you're working with buyers, and a lot of agents do this, don't get frazzled thinking you have to be available 24 seven, or because a lot of them do this, they'll call you, oh my God, we just saw this house, can we see it now? They won't respect you. But they will respect if you set a schedule for them and at the very beginning tell them, okay, this is how it's gonna work, let me know. Or if it is one of those price points that's competitive, tell them that you will try to be available as quickly as possible. But of course, you know, you have a schedule. So let me know and then we can work something out to see it as fast as possible. Um, in a listing presentation. Um, actually go to the next slide because I'm getting into how to communicate with them. In a listing presentation, be straight and direct. They don't like fluff. They don't like small talk. They don't, they are not going to want to hear about possibly previous clients, about issues. They want to know how you're going to get it done. They're, yes, they're going to want to hear the comps briefly. Half of them will probably already have a price in their head. Um, they're going to want to hear your marketing plan. This is really going to be the focus for them. And you have to know exactly what you're going to um, do from A to Z. Once you're um, listing their house, you need to have the best follow-up with them because if not, they will, I remember at the end of the day, everything's their fault. But <laughs> um, if you don't have that communication with them, they will bring it up because they expect to be kept in the loop the whole entire time. Do not repeat yourself. Do not make generalizations. Always be a problem solver. For example, again, listing presentation, very high Ds, they have a thing with control. They need to feel like they're in control. And this is when knowing your own personality style comes into play. Because if let's say you're also a high D, this is when you're going to have to maybe take a step back, tone it down a little bit, and not go for that hard close saying, okay, this is what we need to do. So sign right here. You're going to have to work it a little bit different and word it differently to throw the power back at them. So give them a great presentation. You know you did a great job, but then turn it around and say, okay, so don't you agree with this price and that this is the best solution for you? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So don't you think that we should be listing your house um, by Monday? Yes. You're giving them the opportunity to say yes. And you're also now accustomed, um, getting them used to saying yes to you, but it gives them back the power. So it's just these little, um, it's all psychological. It's these little tidbits of information that you can use to just make everything a lot smoother. Next one. All right, and then when you're working with an I client, um, so if you have a client who's a high eye, they're going to be very outgoing, very expressive. They're going to want to talk a lot. They probably give you a lot of information about their life. So if you notice that when you're having a buyer consultation or you're at a listing appointment and they're being very detailed with their life, what they like, what they don't like, you're most likely with an eye, somebody who's also very opinionated and emotional. So they want an agent that captures their attention. 
they might have a short attention span and they want to be like, they need to have that energy from you. Um, so they want an agent that they have things in common with as well. So that's very important to them. They prefer relationships, friendships over tasks, um, over the minor details. That's what's most important to them. So there are people that you want to walk into a listing appointment and try to find something that you have in common with them and get with them on that level in order to get their attention. If you're going to walk in and only give them facts, with, which facts aren't extremely important in real estate, of course, um, but that's not what's most important to them. So they don't like, as I said, too many details. They don't like boring activities or routine. Um, and they are actually not perfectionists. So if you are a realtor working with a high I, you should be friendly, outgoing, and creative, find creative ways to have solutions with them. And look at them more as a friend and also a client because they're most likely seeing you or, or wanting to see you as a friend. So when you're communicating with a high I client, you want to allow them time to ask questions. They want to be heard. As I've said, they're very expressive, very enthusiastic, and they could also be the emotional buyers and sellers. So they could be the the sellers that are really focused on that their children grew up in the home and they don't want to sell it for emotional reasons or for emotional reasons they think that it's worth more than what it is so we have to know how to calm them down when that happens and then also with buyers like they might not be so interested in the comps but as long as they have that that gut feeling that this is where they want to be or this is the one this is the home that they want so you have to be very intuitive, intuitive with them because that's how they're going to be um, and really get to know what they like and don't like in order to have that match with them. And then also definitely focus on the positives. They do not like Debbie Downers. They want to hear the happy stories, uh, the happy experiences you've had. They gather their information and, you know, their attention to focuses towards that. So if you can, if you have examples of the past, the positive experiences, this would be a good client to share those with. Avoid overloading them with details. They don't want them. They want to hear the happy things and not the facts. And don't interrupt them when they're speaking. Let them express themselves. Let them get that energy out uh, flowing and you'll get in great in a great relationship with them. And then when you're working with an S client, so your S's are, they're very supportive. When you are meeting with an S client, I believe you're going to notice because this is where your introverts come in. So they're more, a little bit more reserved. They're not as outgoing. So mine, I have a I with S and D. And so that's where I say like, okay, I'm very, I can be outgoing, but then I'm also very reserved. Um, they want an agent who is detailed. They want to be copied on emails and they want to know what's going on. So they want the baby steps. They need their hands to be held and they want to know everything that's going on in the transaction from beginning to end. They prefer to follow and not lead and things that they don't like is they don't like change. They don't like confrontation and the unknown. So as I said, like that's where that comes in. They want to know what's going on. So if you send out an email to the title company or to the lender, they want to know what's happening. An agent working with an S client should be detailed, respectful of the client's time and patient. They require a lot of patience because they like, as I said, they want to know step-by-step -step process of everything. So it's not them trying to be tedious or annoying, like that's just how they communicate and how they feel most comfortable. So with them also, it's important to be personal and precise. They are also very relationship focused. Um, so they want to be able to know that they have that relationship with you, but also in order to trust you, they want all the details. And take your time explaining things so they're clear to them. Don't be confrontational or too aggressive. They do not like confrontation. They want things to be mellow and peaceful. They're very tactful with the steps that they take as well. So you just want to be at peace and polite and be able to get to the closing.
Did I miss anything with that one, Catherine? No, I would say uh, with an S also, uh, for example, if you are doing a listing presentation, those are probably going to be the ones you have a little bit of a harder time closing the, at the spot um, at the very moment, just because they tend to have the, they don't like change, especially if it's a very high S. They don't like change. They fear it. They're extremely scared. So you have to be very meticulous in explaining step by step everything that they should be expecting. Um, same thing with a buyer, especially if you're working with a first time home buyer. Um, a lot of agents don't do this, but this is when you should more than ever do a buyer consultation. Sit down with them, um, establish that rapport with them, make them feel comfortable, but then go over step by step what they should be expecting throughout the home buyer process, the initial searches, how the offer is going to take place because they don't like to get caught off guard. Others will handle um, spontaneity, change, fine. Others welcome it. These specific type of people don't. So you have to be very careful with them. Also, I remember when Ashley and I were talking before, she mentioned, oh, fees. They'll point out, you didn't mention there was a processing fee. So again, it's just being very detail oriented with them. Um, okay, so working with a C client. These are your analyticals. They tend to be a little bit more reserved. They like um, peaceful environments, um, very black and white. For, I personally, I think these are the easiest to work with because they're very black and white. They are driven by stats, by numbers, by facts. If you give them black and white facts and numbers, they will be happy. They won't argue because how can you argue with something that's already been proven? Um, so they want you to be organized. You, this is when comps, you need to know the comps like the back of your hands more than ever if you're going to a listing presentation because you know they will know it. They will know their neighborhood inside out. Know the data, know the schools, know the parks, know the average days on the market, especially the average day, the days on the market for every single one of the comps, what, what price they started at, and then what sold. That way you can both come to a mutual agreement on what you're going to do and what the price is going to be. Same thing with a buyer. If you're submitting an offer, they want to feel confident that they're, submit, they're, they're not going to be overpaying. So same thing, also send them comps so they can be confident in their decision um, when submitting that offer and at that price. Very similar to the D in the sense that they don't like small talk. They especially do not like emotions and personal details, unless they open up and start talking a little bit maybe about their life or remembering something, then I would take that as an okay for you to, you know, share a tidbit here and there. But other than that, don't bring up anything else other than work. They're very straight to the point. So always be prepared with your charts, your numbers, know your neighborhoods. Next slide. So communicating with a C, focus on facts and details. They love to see graphs, numbers to validate what you're saying. So if I know some offices offer this, if not look into it, um, they love graphs, trend graphics. Those are fantastic. If you go to, let's say, a listing presentation, especially a building, you can put in the neighborhood, you can put in the building um, address. Um, and it will automatically create a chart for you with average days on the market, sale price versus this year versus last year. It's great. They will love that data. Um, as I mentioned before, avoid getting emotional, seeming emotional, emotional, or even using any sort of emotional language. And then be patient, persistent, and diplomatic. It's straight to the point. Um, you really won't have any awkward silence if you do a good job presenting um, the information to them at the end. It, you more than likely will get a straight answer and right away. Okay, so here are the places where you can take the DISC assessment. Um, I included four of them, two of them free, two of them paid. Catherine took hers on TonyRobbins.com. I also took mine there as well, but as I said, I wanted to do um, the paid one and just to see if there would be a difference. 
but there really wasn't. So if you want to do the free one, TonyRobbins.com. Uh, they also have other options. So if you do want a more detailed report, he has different payment prices. This personalitytesting.com, I did mine through discprofile.com and that gives you 23 pages of report. Uh, and as I said, it tells you like how you communicate with each specific communication style type. There's also discinsights.com and it'll provide a report as well. For the assessment, it takes 15 to 30 minutes depending on you and your answers. There's a lot of times where there's some questions where you might not know, like you might not know which one to answer because one could be that you're more of this certain thing or less than, but you might feel like you're somewhere in the middle. So I took around 30 minutes because I kept trying to decide which one I was more of. Um, so it's a set of questions and it, it could be like four different things and it can say, are you more of this? Are you least of this or are you neutral? But the point is to put different varying ones so that it can make the assessment correctly. It, you get a report right away and don't forget that you can be a mixture of this. So it's not just one. You can be three of them, you can be all four, but you're always gonna have a higher inclination of one of them. And when in doubt, go with your first instinct of what you thought it was going to be. Because a, a lot of times you lie to yourself thinking you're not a certain way or you are a certain way, but if one popped in your head right away and then you're second guessing yourself, go with your first mm -hmm. choice or go with that gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's also important to put down how you are now, not who you want to be like. I'm like, no, I, I'm this way, but I really want to be like this. No, but where you're at right now in your life. Because as I mentioned in the very beginning, these change, these can change over time. So in two years, you can take it again and it'll be probably not completely different, but some of it will, will change. So the most important thing in communication is to hear what isn't being said. And thank you, everybody. Does anyone have any questions? Are there questions? No? Okay, so today was short and to the point. And again, big emphasis on just learning the different styles, learning your own personality style, because that's truly going to help you in your own um, selling style with your different clients. So if you have any questions, um, in the future, feel free to reach out to any one of us. Yes, this was fun. Seems similar to Myers-Briggs. Yes, definitely. Yeah, that's one, uh, that's one I took a long time ago. I haven't taken that one again. Good job, ladies. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Have an amazing day.